Dr. Gardner Taylor, let me come to you next because Michael, with all due respect, is much more uh, uh, a contemporary scholar. And I do not mean to insult you at all, but you are certainly chronologically gifted and you've been around a little while. And I want to get your perspective on what you think is wrong with the black church. What's wrong with the black church today? Well, I think first, Travis, let me thank you for this wonderful panel with which I'm associated. Um, I think what is mainly wrong with it is it has not been as much church as it is supposed to be. Um, it has, the church began as, um, uh, Eric, has, as Michael has said, uh, in oppression, and uh, it has been our General Motors. And uh, when we get too far away from that, we lose perspective, and we lose the sense of its energy and its power. I believe that the church has to more and more give a sense of significance and value to individual person, persons. This has been the great struggle of black America to overcome the anonymity, the oppression, and the feeling of lostness in this continent. I believe that's the responsibility of the church. And I think in implementing that, the church has to do, and I, I think also that the church does do and has done a great number of things. I, I've just left uh, Cincinnati and they have um, a partnership there uh, which goes on remarkably well. In, in San Francisco, Amos Brown and Third Baptist are, are partnering with the Muslim community. Things are going on in the church. I think more of it needs to be done, but the church will never do all it ought to do because I guess it's the 38th verse of the fifth chapter of Matthew says, be ye perfect. And therefore, we will always be aiming and ought to be. Mm. Bishop Vashtar. I, uh, I look back now on 60 years and we talk about the church and what it has not done it is still our sustenance and our strength. And we need to recognize that. Black people make fun of their preachers. They poke jokes at their churches. They exalt these people who insult women. These new so-called artists who refer to our women in the most deplorable terms. Churches are set against that. Preachers throughout the country, I see Charles Adams sitting there, they have an HIV program. I made a mistake, it was not Cincinnati. I was in Columbus where they had work. Where would our people be without the church? It is the only thing you black people have. Everything else in this society is controlled. Politics, entertainment, athletics, and these are the things that black people now put their emphasis upon. When the only thing you've got, the, maybe the only thing America has that is still independent of this culture is the black church. And we ought to uphold it and lift it up, find out what's wrong with it, try to correct it. But we don't need a lot of pessimism. It has been our sustenance. It is our strength today. It was our only hope for tomorrow. Let me ask you, Dr. Gardner Taylor, because you are the dean, Eugene, I'm gonna to come to you in a second. I know you want to respond to the HIV question as, as Dr. Taylor did. Let me ask you this, and I ask you with all due deference, Dr. Taylor, you know I love and respect you dearly, and this is why I wanted you here. Let me ask you with all due respect and all due deference this question. I was in a conversation with some folk last night preparing for this conversation today, and someone made the comment, Dr. Taylor, that it is only in the black community, you make the point, you make the point that only in the black community, the only thing we own, that we have, that we control in black America really is the black church. I hear your point. But is that a good thing or a bad thing? And here's what I ask. I asked Dr. Taylor whether or what why that? it is, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask this question and see. Uh, no, let, it, is, it is not a good, I'm sorry. Let, let me ask you this question, Dr. Taylor. Let me, here's the question. I, I, that was just my preface. Here's the question. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that in other communities, when they talk about leaders and leadership, 
They talk about entrepreneurs. They talk about academics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not suggesting we don't have that by evidence of your presence here today. But when you talk about leadership in the black community, what you most often talk about are black preachers. When you talk about black leadership, you talk about black preachers. In the world that we live today, is that a good thing or a bad thing? We, we need more than black preachers. But the great emphasis in our whole black community is upon several things. And I have nothing against them. Athletes, entertainers, politicians. The work of these black churches is ignored. I know a church which raised a million dollars for community interest. The white press naturally did not take it up. The black press did not take it up because we are interested in shadow and not in substance. We can jump up and holler and scream all we want, but until we get back down to the basics of advancing our people, we'll not make it. Dr. Taylor. Once, Dr. Taylor's microphone, please. I will not claim to be a believer in nonviolence. I believe the Civil War should have been fought. <laughs> uh, but I do believe that we have to raise practical questions about this. Why is North Korea, which has already produced bombs, not being questioned, but Iraq is? Are we going to trade? blood for oil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are fewer than five children of the people who sit in the United States Congress who are in the armed services. Fewer than five. When Charles Rangel proposed a draft for everybody so that we all equally share in whatever we're going into, he was told that a volunteer army is more efficient. We need to ask some questions. James, quick closing word, Dr. Gardner Taylor. Yes, sir. It is, the church is God's gift to us. The black church is at last all that we have. My word to you black Americans is to get on board, clean it up where it's dirty, fix it up where it's wrong. This is my, maybe my parting word to black America. I reached my 85th year this year, what we need to do is to take this engine God has given us, treat it with respect and sacredness, and use it and let it use us to his purposes. He's the Dean Gardner Taylor.